Well, because we all think that testing is awesome and we think you should do more of it. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and I see all of you should do it. Yes, you see there we have a difference of opinion, so we'll, we'll have a vote. <laughs> Who here thinks that we all should do the work? Okay, one, two. <laughs> Who here thinks that Li Wen should do all of the work? <laughs> I, I, I told it, you. It yeah. has been democratically yes. decided. Yes. When I'm only one person, I, I, I was surprised <laughs> to, to hear that NetApp has 20 people work, work, working on that. Yeah, uh, given, given what they have, it sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there, is, there is massive value in, in what they are doing, but it's not something that one person can do by themselves. Yeah, so. So you know, although, we, although we do expect you to deliver those results. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying best as I can, but uh, I, yeah, I mean, uh, you, uh, in, the, in the meantime, you probably... Oh, okay. In the meantime, you probably cannot complain. Uh, we don't have an uh, infrastructure as good as NAB has. Yeah, but yeah, I will try to improve that. Okay. Uh, well, on, on that note, I do think that if you run into issues where the solution is I need more hardware, mm -hmm. that we should just make noise about that because the foundation might be able to help and if not the foundation, some of our larger users mm -hmm. might be interested in just, just have a rack of hardware. Yeah. Uh, currently, I won't think uh, hardware is the uh, biggest issue because uh, if I need hardware, I believe I can easy to uh, ask foundation to purchase or ask uh, uh, external uh, sponsors yeah. such as cloud provider or so. Uh, but before I doing that, I I have to ask myself. Uh, can I use those uh, resources yes. efficiently? Yes. Yeah. I, I don't want to allocate lots of hardware and to just put them into idle. Which is yes, easy. absolutely. It, it's just that if there are things where the problem is made easier by just throwing a lot of machines at it, just throw a lot of machines at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so the, the thing before that is we need to figure out a way to make our test more scalable, yeah. So uh, that's the thing I'm still uh, deciding, yeah. Uh, and uh, um, one thing I would I, I I would like to emphasize is deciding a um, CI infrastructure of an open source project is much different than setting up a CI system in a, in a cooperative environment. You need to consider lots of uh, some other different things like the security. Yeah, I mean, you, for this kind of system, for, for, for our CI infrastructure, we need to be as open as possible, but we also need to be as close, as secure as possible. Yeah, so that's, uh, I feel that's the biggest challenge I, I, I I need to consider so far. But anyway, anyway uh, before we uh, officially start, uh, I hope everybody can go to uh, the Working Group Wiki page and uh, scroll down to agenda and uh, open the uh, uh, notes, XMD, and uh, please help to, to keep in note. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Okay, uh, I think Charlie is leaving. Right, I will. Yeah, and uh, uh, one thing I want to do in the working group is trying to uh, identify the issues and uh, collect uh, the comments. And uh, most important thing is I would like to have a, a actionable list and uh, if. It, uh, the best situation is each actionable item uh, 
is associated with one name behind that. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So uh, I was talking to uh, some other people before this working group, and uh, uh, so at first I thought uh, we can directly start with uh, action items and uh, 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 discussion about uh, what we want to do, uh, and the discussion about discuss about the. Uh, the, the potential issues in the, our uh, CS system, but uh, I probably need uh, uh, use I need, I need to use ten minutes to to have a brief introduction of our uh, CI environment for uh, people who didn't uh, aware. Okay, so uh, I'll just use the slide. Uh, two years ago, but uh, it is actually a 15, 15 minutes talk. Uh, I will uh, skip a lot of uh, slides. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, firstly, uh, CIWD.org is using Jenkins, uh, as you can see at uh, CIWD.org. They are uh, one big version serve as the main Jenkins host and uh, the artifact server. Uh, currently, we have eight uh, dedicated build agent server uh, in NYI. Each of them uh, is configured uh, on two uh, execution slots. So basically, we can. Uh, uh, do a clean head plus for the build uh, around an hour and uh, for test uh, that takes uh, uh, another hour. Right. Do, you, do, you, do you use anything like Ccash? Hmm? Do you use anything like Ccash? Or um, not, not right now. Uh, one thing is, uh, I, I, w I want to do that, uh, but uh, currently uh, uh, I'm also collecting and uh, accounting the compiler warnings. And uh, if we use uh, uh, Ccash, uh, we, uh, first thing is it will generate lots of false positives. The other thing is uh, uh, we cannot uh, compare the results of two bits. Um, but uh, yeah. We definitely want to have something to uh, to to improve the build speed. Uh, one thing is we don't need have to do uh, it. We need we don't need to do clean build uh, to each region. And uh, but for that we probably, we probably need to move uh, 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 compiler warning to another build. So uh, I would say that that is one item in my to-do list for a long time, and I haven't had time on that. And uh, uh, the other thing is uh, uh, about about the build speed is uh, the some people suggest we do a, a non clean build. Uh, the thing is uh, those. Build agents uh, don't have a uh, 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 lot of disk space, so uh, we have to. Oops, sorry. Okay, uh, we have to clean up uh, the the, the ob object directory uh, after each job running, and uh, uh, I also tried to archive uh, uh, object directory to the. Uh, Activate server and uh, uh, download and extract before doing a new build. Uh, the thing is, I found that uh, in the end, uh, uh, those two, I mean, for clean build and uh, comparing to uh, extra, uh, extract, fetch and extract the uh, previous object files, uh, the time is uh, not. The difference is not uh, very, very 
there are not very uh, much difference about real time. Uh, I, I believe there is something I can improve, but I haven't looked into that. Yeah. Do you know offhand roughly specs of these builders? I mean, just from how much RAM, oh, how, what, how fast CPUs, how many cores you're building? Do you, uh, or is that documented somewhere? Yeah. <coughs> uh, currently, I think we have two kinds of uh, uh, hardware. Uh, the new one, let me check. I believe it's about 32 or 24 cores, and And uh, thirty four uh, CPUs. Yeah. And uh, those machines are from eight system. Right. And uh, yeah, uh, I would say that uh, uh, currently the building speed is not the, the, the highest priority, but I know that is important. But uh, um, currently, my highest priority thing is uh, making our uh, CI system uh, stable, including the, the, the testers. Uh, last year, I spent a lot of time to make uh, our drinking setup and all the cast uh, stable. So I believe now the availability of this site is much better than last year. And uh, 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 currently, the problem is uh, identify the uh, flaky testers and uh, getting those things built, uh, fixed. Uh, currently, we have around uh, 7,400 uh, test cases. And uh, uh, there is about, I think about five to 10 cases is flaky. And uh, uh, but, uh, it's a bit tricky because it only uh, shows up uh, during, during Every every five or ten builds, so uh, currently I, we don't have a very efficient way to identify those cases. Uh, currently, uh, currently the, the the method of identifying those cases is because I received every uh, build failure report, and uh, I can I can. So the thing is, I I, I saw those uh, I see those. Test cases, and I said, okay, I remember I saw this case before. Then I go back to check, and uh, um, and I found okay, this test case uh, is, is failing uh, x times in the past uh, y builds, and uh, then I file a ticket says uh, this is a flaky test, and uh, ask people to fix that, or I just disable it if they cannot fix it. Uh, uh, quickly, so uh, that is one thing I hope uh, some people can help. Is uh, Jenkins has a very good uh, web uh, web service interface. You can uh, communicate Jenkins with JSON uh, RPC or XML RPC. So one thing I hope uh, people can help is write a script to uh, to walk through the last uh, uh, 10 or even 100 builds and they're collecting the, the build results and they provide a, a summary that uh, this, this, case, this test case is failing say uh, five times during the last 20 builds so uh, we can mark this test case is problematic because uh, one thing we want to do is uh, rebuild the the uh, sorry, I mean, 
can uh, make these systems trustworthy to the developers. Um, from looking at stuff that I asked, I think there's actually two cases to point out here. There's this test case that's problematic, and then the other important one to be aware of because it has kind of different meaning is we really like to break this section of code. <laughs> I mean, it just you can look at the data and go, okay, this this test case is flaky, but the test case may be perfect, and we also need to look at, oh no, we just really like this. There's just some tough piece of code and. Does that mean that we need to have a bigger conversation about something being refactored or protected better? Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Mm -hmm. So do you have some filter for when your test cases you introduce to this piece of code? Do you know that? Like, if, if it really can be the case that your test case worked last week and it had 0% failure rate, and then this week it has 5%, and turning it off is going to mean that you're going to have to find that right. longer, like probably sometime in the future. Can you? Do you know that these are good? You ran 100 at something or do something that you can validate them? Because that case that you're talking about where you tweak it and broke it is terrifying. It's really hard to find, right? Right. And uh, I don't really like to, to disable a test case and uh, just file a ticket. Because in my experience, uh, if i doing this, that ticket is uh, usually getting ignored for, for a long time. So I think the thing we really need to do is go back to what he said and pull the data out of Jenkins. So Jenkins has all this you know, data and crunch it and hopefully have somebody smarter than me be able to do a pretty web interface of the process data. So do you actually have, uh, do you take the tests individually with some sort of data digest that you know what they relate to? Or um, what they relate to as far as? No, I just want so to like the tests introduced at this point would have like, let's say some sort of UDL ID. And then you can go back and say, look the last hundred builds or six months, did that UDL ID always pass? Or do you have to go through a crunch of the data to do? We have something internal called like log on it, which can search backwards and find for a particular kind of fixed failure. So uh, but the thing is because we're running it on cadence, like we don't really go back six months, we only have to go back either to our endpoints where we're doing it or just yeah, yeah. in the it's past sure. already you know, yeah. actually did. Because we get all, we should be able to get JUnit output of all this stuff, right? To Jenkins. Do we? So again, we should. Does all the Jenkins, all the test stuff that Jenkins provide, basically JUnit out of the test RPC? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think the key is that you have to know that you have a good point, and then at some point there was an inflection, and then it started to go bad, and then you need somebody or some automation to go pay attention to treat it as a serious problem. Those yeah. Are the two things you need. Yeah. Okay, uh, so back to introduction. Yeah, previously it is called a Jenkins WBD and then it got renamed to CI WBD uh, And last time the thing is the thing we introduced is the artifact server. So uh, previously uh, we just keep everything inside the Jenkins cluster and uh, for, for the new system, uh, it's not so new, but uh, the current system is uh, we have, uh, we, for, for a pipeline, we have uh, several jobs, uh, first, first uh, several phases. The first phase is, uh, of course, build the word and the kernel and uh, uh, build, uh, build the package. <coughs> so, those packages are uh, uploaded to our artifact server, uh, which is at uh, artifact.cl.bbd.org. And uh, we try to provide the standard hierarchy as uh, ftp.bbd.org. Uh, uh, and uh, we also have uh, symbolic links to the uh, uh, latest or latest test uh, directory. But basically, uh, we can we can have almost every uh, revisions. Uh, we archive the build artifact about uh, I think one to two months, and uh, uh, for the artifact uh, older than one to two months, uh, we keep uh, one 
religion, uh, one religion in each week than each uh, month. Yeah. Um, some people suggest that we probably can ask some cloud providers to, to uh, archive those things forever, <coughs> but I'm not sure if the, uh, it's very, uh, we should do, do that or not. Probably worth to keep uh, longer, say we can uh, keep every artifacts of every revision for longer, say uh, half, half year or one year. Uh, uh, currently, each revision we build for every art uh, architectures, which takes about, <coughs> uh, last time I checked, it's about 50, 50 uh, by zero gigabytes. And uh, this may be, may increase uh, over time. Yeah. And uh, September. Yeah. So uh, we basically have three phases. Uh, first is uh, build. Then we use those architecture. The other job in uh, the other Jenkins job in that pipeline is uh, build a test VM. So that job is basically uh, fetches the artifacts in the previous stage and uh, uh, create a virtual machine image uh, and also install the uh, dependencies required by the test. Uh, so such as Perl or um, uh, Perl, currently we need a Perl, Python, and the uh, uh utilities for uh, crypto, crypto, cryptography uh, utilities. And uh, uh, after create that uh, image, we upload that image to the architecture server. Then uh, the final uh, job is downloading that uh, VM image, extracting it, and uh, Run in Beehive, and uh, after uh, uh, we run a Kuya test. Kuya is the uh, test driver of uh, 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 our project, and uh, Kuya that tool can, in the end, it generates a, a JUnit format report, and uh, after the test virtual <coughs> machine shut down, we extract the. Uh, the unit uh, report from that uh, image and uh, then feed to Jenkins uh, test result parser and uh, then we have a, a, a summary by, by, by Jenkins. Yeah. Uh, so as you can see, two years earlier we have 6,000 uh, tests. So in past uh, two years, there are 1,500 uh, test cases introduced. Yeah, uh, and a bit increased upon this number. But uh, of course, we need more testers. Uh, oh, over these 7,000 testers, uh, there are only, I think, uh, around five or 600 test cases are directed uh, related to uh, SIDS, which stands for uh, kernel testers. So we probably need more. But of course, uh, for other testers, such as uh, uh, net, uh, uh, net inet test or uh, pack, uh, net filter testers, which, uh, which is not uh, directly test the name, uh, uh, sees as well as inside the test and then, but uh, of course that those testers are uh, directed related to to kernel. But the thing is, uh, I found that uh, we do have very good uh, testers, tester coverage in our user space programs <coughs> and the libraries. And for uh, kernel space, we still need more uh, testers for for. Uh, assuring uh, we are not breaking things. Right. So those are the uh, introduction to, to the Jenkins interface. We'll just skip that. And uh, yeah, I'll the server. Oh. Okay. 
And uh, all, uh, as I said before, uh, we need um, this kind of uh, open source uh, CI system of the of an open source project is we need to be as open as possible. Uh, so uh, we learn from the the OpenStack and uh, uh, Media Wiki project. We use uh, uh, a tool called the Jenkins Job Builder, uh, which is, we still, we are still using that. Uh, although currently uh, Jenkins has a, a, another uh, approach called uh, Pipeline as Code. And so currently we haven't switched to that because I found uh, 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 that approach cannot uh, fulfill all the need of our project. But uh, uh, maybe we can, we, can, we can do that uh, in the future because uh, it seems that in the Jenkins project uh, is mainly uh, focused on the development, the development of that approach. Uh, but anyway, we need to focus on the need of our project. Uh, IX has almost entirely moved over to pipeline, so mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, Chris or Joe would be good people to talk to if you yeah. wanted to see if you're missing anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I await that. Uh, one reason I haven't uh, moved to pipeline as code is uh, I'm not sure uh, because this FreeBSD CI project started with a uh, an experimental project uh, sitting aside of the main project. And uh, if we want to uh, do that, like I does, is uh, we need to move those job description to our main repository. Yeah, and uh, uh, need to separate, uh, and also need to merge to each stable branches. Yeah, I'm still thinking what's the best way to do that. Uh, so for now, uh, all the configuration are posted in GitHub. We have a repository called the FreeBSD-EI in FreeBSD uh, organization. Yeah, and uh, we have um, uh, uh, not so concrete, but I believe it is usable uh, uh, set up documentation on wikiwdd.org. So you can go to wiki.vdd.org slash Jenkins slash setup uh, to build a, a, a similar system as ciwdd.org. Yeah, and uh, those are the uh, other things I want to cover right now. Yeah, and the uh, email notification. Uh, Currently, we don't send uh, email notification to uh, FreeBSD current and the other listers, but only to the uh, commit, commits only. Uh, 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 soon, I will configure our Jenkins to also send a copy of every uh, notification mail to a newly created list. Uh, well, it created uh, in last year, but I haven't had time to configure uh, Jenkins, our Jenkins file, uh, our Jenkins instance. So uh, last year we created a two uh, two mailing list with different uh, uh, prefix. Yeah, uh, most of our mailing list uh, are prefixed by FreeBSD dash. But uh, last year we created two. One is dev dash dev, dev dash ci. The other is dev dash uh, reviews. So the goal is uh, when there is a change in those two systems, uh, those two systems, uh, there will be a mail also sent to this list. So for people who interested in seeing. Uh, lots of reports uh, can subscribe those two lists. Yeah, and uh, those are the presentation details. Oh, and uh, one thing uh, we have done for, uh, two, two or three years ago is we have 
integration with our fabricator, uh, our review system uh, fabricator. Um, but then we turned it off for for uh, because of uh, uh, at last time uh, the Jenkins, the inter integration is done by using a uh, uh, Jenkins plugin developed by uh, Uber, the that uh, shared taxi company. Uh, but the thing is um, uh, that uh, that plugin is not very stable, so. In, I found that in most of time, uh, Jenkins cannot retrieve the patches from fabricator, uh, and uh, it caused a build failure. And uh, uh, Jenkins just reply, fabricator says, uh, 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 "This page is cannot cannot be built uh, correctly." Then fabricator put a, a, a big failure mark on that. <laughs> On that patch, and uh, which uh, caused many problems to the uh, developers and the submitters. So uh, we disabled that for 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 a long time until now. Um, I found that uh, um, uh, Uber has released a new uh, version of uh, lab plugin in the end of last year, but I still don't have time to. Try that. So, uh, yeah, that's one thing. Uh, uh, work in progress, and uh, I hope uh, if uh, uh, if anybody has their own setup of uh, Jenkins and Fabricator, can try and uh, tell me uh, if that works. Yeah, or I'm not sure uh, when I can uh, turn that back. And uh, one thing probably not so many uh, developers know, we do run clean scan view uh, daily, and uh, uh, we have uh, uh, a, a, a graphic uh, a report of our clean view. So uh, if you are looking for uh, uh, some simple bug fix of your 3D project, you can check the list and fix that. Uh, I would say for this uh, static analysis tool, there are uh, many false positive because uh, the nature of state, uh, static uh, analyzers, but they, uh, they, they do exist some uh, real problems. So yeah, I hope people can, can, can check and uh, try to fix things. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, this is the uh, 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 turn bug report uh, interface uh, provided by uh, this. Does Clang Analyzer have a method to uh, annotate false positives? Uh, it seems no. Last time I checked, but I don't know it. In the you can talk the analyzer around the problem. Specifically, say this is not. So there is a, a syntax of notation. What's that? Uh, do you mean there is a, a notation to turn off a turn analyzer? Off the analyzer around for people? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so hopefully we can do that and put comments in to reduce the false positive. Yeah, yeah, that would be very helpful because currently I think we have yeah over <laughs> eight thousand of over nine thousand. Yeah, and the uh, computer models I have saved, and the pages, yeah, people like pages. Yeah. And uh, uh, one thing might be useful for uh, downstream is uh, because Jenkins provides a uh, just REST API, so you can use JQ, uh, uh, and JQ to query the latest. Uh, uh, Make it stable in the te or test uh, tested view uh, uh, revision number from from our server. Yeah, if you are not doing developer, but also uh, but just want to uh, 
check which is the latest version tested the revision as you are uh, 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 as the base of your other work. Yeah. And uh, uh, one thing uh, which is uh, and I want to uh, improve is uh, we have a dashboard in the back of the media org, uh, which the back end of this system is connected to, is use uh, uh, REST RPC to JSON RPC to the Jenkins system. Uh, but uh, this, this interface is the old uh, Tinderbox uh, 3D Vita org. <coughs> and uh, currently, it only provides the information of how uh, build is success or not. We want to extend it to include the uh, the uh, information of uh, test. So uh, I think we the repository is at uh, 3DB Foundation and uh, Jenkins Tinderbox. So uh, this is basically a, a JavaScript, uh, JavaScript single page uh, application. So if there is any from an engineer, or if it's, I believe most of us are not from an engineer, but uh, if you know any from an engineer, uh, 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 I hope they can provide help. Okay. Yeah, so finally, uh, uh, most of the discussions are happen on previous B testing mailing list. And we do have a, a IRC channel, previous BCI. Um, so please feel free to join in the discussion. Uh, yeah, most of most of the, the future work of this this page is, is done. So And uh, one thing started uh, earlier this year is uh, I try to publish um, uh, CI weekly report uh, every week. So basically, I provide the the, the statistics of uh, the the build and the test of last week, and uh, the I I highlight it the. The failing test case and uh, the tickets. Uh, people, uh, I hope people can can pay attention. Uh, two, there are two things here. Yeah, first thing is uh, this is what I learned. Uh, just disable test case and the failing the tickets uh, doesn't really work because those tickets are open for 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 several months, but uh, nobody pay really pay attention of that. And uh, the other thing is, uh, we have two uh, uh, identified uh, uh, race condition in, in our field uh, process. So these these two are very annoyed because uh, uh, um, your view your kernel in the view world that just randomly failed by those two cases. So one thing uh, happened in our system is uh, some people just receive a uh, 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 build failure notification just because they changed, the, they fixed a typo in main page. So that, uh, this thing is very annoying. Uh, one, one thing in the short term I would like to have is uh, uh, a script to build out this kind of, uh, uh, I, I mean, currently we, before sending mail to developers, we have a, a, a Groovy script to filter, the, to pass the, the, the build log and to try to filter out, to identify the root cause of, uh, of this build, uh, of this failure. So currently I only uh, provide the patterns of uh, uh, Jenkins internal errors such as uh, connection to the build step 
disconnected. Um, uh, so I hope somebody can help extend this script to cover this kind of, to detect this kind of error and uh, don't send the mail uh, upon this situation. Um, but on the other hand, I also worried about if I doing this, uh, there will be less people aware of this kind of race condition and the loss uh, issue will never be uh, fixed. Okay, so uh, those are the issues and the uh, 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 working progress of our current CI system. Uh, so currently, uh, uh, I work, <coughs> yeah, besides uh, identifying and fixing uh, flaky testers, uh, one thing I'm working on is trying to build a hardware test lab for uh, our security team and uh, uh, release engineering. And uh, uh, after that, uh, this character can, uh, I will try to extend those character to our uh, network network performance uh, test lab. So um, uh, in the meantime, while, while doing this, my, my hope is I can uh, work with uh, uh, other other vendors to to share the code and uh, even infrastructures. So uh, I mean, uh, <coughs> the thing I hope is uh, from the FreeBSD project, we provide the uh, uh, required changes in in the kernel or provide some basic basic tools. And therefore, uh, downstream uh, vendors they can uh, reuse those script and. Uh, 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 one thing I want to achieve is uh, we can have a FreeBSD test result hub and uh, try to uh, let, let also let downstream uh, vendors to submit back their test results. Then we can uh, we can we can have a, a comprehensive history of uh, the test uh, and uh, performance resource of uh, each revision. Yeah, uh, but currently I don't have a, a very good idea about how to do so. I will think about that uh, later. So. Maybe just a simple job that uh, allows the uploaders to make hmm? A simple job to... Like a, like a parameterized job that will just prompt you to upload a, upload or submit a file with the Mm, yeah, that's, yeah, that's possible. Yeah, and uh, uh, I know I also need to take uh, uh, security into consideration. How do we uh, uh, how do we how do we let uh, trust the user to submit a report? Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's a that's a that's a way to do so. No? Nick, are you going to say anything? Um, I was also just going to say, I mean, it depends on how you want to it might be misunderstood, but if we do have an outside tool to, uh, especially for security reasons, if we have an outside tool to display this data a little bit better, yes, you can click through Jenkins, but it's a little bit slow and a little bit janky. Um, that's also potentially an avenue for multiple people to upload into a central tool that's just for, you know, data collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will, I will think about that. Hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, okay. the next thing is uh, uh, to do items. Uh, Jenkins to do this page was created uh, at the time <coughs> which uh, at the time, uh, we are still at uh, Jenkins.freebd.org. And uh, uh, most of them are, uh, most of those items are out, out, out of date. Uh, and uh, most of them are just uh, uh, infrastructure changes. So uh, in this working group, uh, I did, 
I, I would like to use this time to, I, I, I'm, not to I'm not going to use time to uh, scrub list, list list because uh, I, most, of us, most of the people in this room are not from cast admin or drinking admin. Uh, what I want to do uh, in this working group is uh, lessening the, the requirements from, uh, from, from the vendors and the developers to, to think about how we can uh, uh, work together. And uh, uh, during the past uh, process, I, uh, yeah, I, I have a simple uh, uh, list about the things uh, people want to, to have. And uh, uh, in this working group, what I want to do is uh, increasing, I mean, add more items to, 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 to this list and uh, try to uh, understand which uh, item is uh, most benefit to, to most of people. So I can work on, I can work on that item uh, uh, first. The URL is on the top of the note of the working group. Yeah. So uh, if it's possible, I would like to listen uh, uh, what are the expect thing from, uh, from you guys. I believe uh, uh, for the for the for the uh, uh, core survey that that is that uh, and Sean told me that uh, that is uh, the, that is one thing about seventy or eighty uh, developers want to have. <coughs> about how we can uh, I said uh, to bring this project to together? Um, I really, I mean, I, I don't know if I really have anything specific right now. Joe may have something. Um, I mean, obviously, we definitely want to make sure that uh, we pull in a lot of this stuff, especially now that bone bank is on the way it is to, uh, you know, to get to get it uh, to get it working, so you know we can rerun it in our branches, and we may. I mean, we're really busy right now, but we may even want to take a poke at the pipeline work, just because it ends up being a lot more flexible to have it in tree. Mm -hmm. And even if that ends up as a second set of jobs for head or head and sit, you know, I think that, I think pipeline has a lot of advantages, at least from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. And having your code and your tests in tree has a lot of advantages. Um, uh, beyond that, I think it's just really a discussion I really want to go. One of the really interesting things I want to look at actually is uh, the uh, CIP stuff that mm -hmm. um, was talked about earlier and basically the idea of more than just running stuff on, on a single gas. You know, how can we do, how can we design in a, sense, in a way that is easily to contribute to um, Ability to launch a FreeBSD and a Linux VM or FreeBSD and Windows or FreeBSD and FreeBSD VMs and do interbox communication. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess one of the questions I'm not sure about is uh, something that we've hit a lot lately is are we, for bugs we've hit, are we making sure that that, that, that gets turned into test cases? So, and specifically, one I need to chase is I know uh, I systems just hit the fact that for pretty much all of 12, I'm not sure how many knobs you had to turn to get it in the right way, but um, multitask has been broken, and I believe causes kernel, causes kernel panic, Joe? Yep. Yeah, where symbol is turning on NDNS and tar, and 12 would fall up when we found this out about two weeks ago, maybe a month and a half ago, when 12 went out for a while. So our important action ended up beyond just fixing it, you know, Matt Mason fixing it and just may already be fixed. 
is making sure we get the test cases in so that doesn't happen next time. And you know, making sure as a community that we have the right path as, as bug taking comes in or fixes or you know whatever path that that's a really important way, at least from my point of view at IX, to identify, you know, it's very obvious something needs to if it's already been broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so do you have a policy in IX uh, that every bug report should be closed with a fix and uh, the test? No, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, but well, we, we do have a policy that uh, yes, a test scenario has to be. Uh, it it kind of works the other way around. But, um, as as a bug ticket comes in, mm -hmm. you know, the developer has to figure out what is uh, what is necessary to test a resolution. Um, and so yes, we, we do basically come up with a test case at that time, mm -hmm. but but not as part of the closure process. It's just. So to figure out what we need to fix it, what could be done right, you know, for this to be considered being fixed for the prerequisites, and then it, it varies whether that's a manual test, whether that's an automated test in the suite, um, and then even if it's an automated test, is that something that runs continually, or are we just moved to Jira so it's a whole lot easier to, you know, have a bank of tests even if we're not running them continually, and go, oh, I can go pull this one out of my hat for this case. Um, Yes, we want to run much more, but you know we're not very parallel, you know, in our testing right now. I see. Yeah, uh, this is yeah, this is probably another issue, but I also found that uh, in the previous project we also have lots of uh, bug report, and uh, I found that uh, most of the report just uh, I mean, if a report is uh, complete with the reproducible uh, procedures. Uh, we usually, uh, the developers usually get them fixed uh, quickly, but uh, uh, we cannot force uh, those developers to, to also write a uh, test case of that. And uh, uh, at the first, I try to keep a list that says, oh, those are the, the, the case, test cases we need. But then I found that uh, this list increased uh, very fast. And, uh, of course, uh, I'm not saying it'll fix the problem, sure. but do we have good, easy documentation and easy? The biggest thing I found with developers is make life as easy as possible set for them. If you want to get stuff out of them, mm -hmm. do we have good documentation and good pathways for them to put tests in as easily as possible mm -hmm. and touch as little as possible? That's a good point. We should uh, have more documentation and uh, trying to to let the process of ADV test easier. Yeah, because because you know they have the technical knowledge, but if we can get that out of them mm -hmm. and, and figure out the final little bit, you know, it was a lot of a lot of honestly, I, you know, I'll be honest about what I do at IX. A lot of what I do at IX is I will wrap up. Uh, when you know when it's this size stuff, I'll wrap up an example test case. Okay, here's a reproduction, here's this kind of stuff. And then I hand it off to Joe and um, uh, another one of my coworkers who actually then take that and you know finalize that into the actual automated test. I see. I, I very lately written some automated test code and it's absolutely horrible. So yes. Okay. <laughs> different people, different skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing I want to know about is the uh, developer process, not, uh, not only in IX, but also other companies, is how uh, uh, developers run those regression tests uh, locally. I mean, uh, yeah, um, because currently we don't have a very good infrastructure for uh, handling submissions. I mean, uh, yeah, for, for things like a GitHub, uh, we have GitHub has uh, has uh, poor request uh, workflow, and uh, when you submit workflow, uh, submit uh, a poor request, uh, you, that request that can be connected to a CI system run all the regression testers. Um, 
And the thing is, I'm not sure it's good or not. I found that some people just use this uh, for this kind of commit uh, test system as part of their devo development. And uh, I'm not sure this, this is good or not. I'll tell you the scenario that you'll end up in is if you try this for a while. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll end up with hundreds of jobs stacked up and people right. will be able to merge their work. Or very expensive AWS sales. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very yeah. hard to get right um, and, and do it in parallel. So, and it's actually open source and all public. Um, there's the iSystems i automation framework. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying it's used all the times by all developers, but uh, we actually have it set up as a port in the uh, TrueOS ports tree. Mm -hmm. um, and any developer can, uh, you know, grab it, download it, and go run, and it'll go launch the Beehive or a Selenium test or WebUI will go launch and run them mm -hmm. locally. So if the developer is working on a specific issue and they want to be able to run it repeatedly um, or whatever, it's, it, again, it comes back to that being very easy to set up. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, this allows us to run these things outside of Jenkins. And yes, we can already run, you know, Q, QR, QA, however we say, you know, directly. Mm -hmm. um, but we're just making that as easy as possible, including um, if we need to integrate the VM part of it. Mm -hmm. Is that able to be run uh, just in, the, in developers' uh, yeah. desktop? Okay. Yeah, it's able to uh, be run on uh, any uh, basically true based system, but that's just because that's what most of our stuff derivative of, um, basically for BSD current. Mm -hmm. Really, I see. Um, so, so question about the way you have things currently set up. Like, are any of the tests that you talked about in your pipeline, are they, I can sit down with the client, they don't have to connect to anything and I can run them in my local client or does it have to connect into Jenkins and then have Jenkins do them in the head? Do you mean that uh, if I see the uh, failure, can I reproduce uh, locally? Well, yeah, I mean, that would be both things, right? Like, I'm, one can I reproduce a failure locally on my on my box? So let's say it's a hard failure. Mm -hmm. And also, if I'm writing test cases, is there stuff that I can just plug in, or that automatically becomes part of what you're going to run? Uh, I think that I think that yes. Uh, we just run every uh, test case in uh, Brigade resource tree. So as long as no test case uh, inside of Brigade, so there's just a make file target for each of the components that has press in it. Is that and that's part of the tree? If I pull it down, I'm just ignoring that. Yeah. Right. So the software you're looking for, you also need to grab is called QA, QA, KYUA. Somebody was funny. Um, uh, but no offense if that person's in this room. Um, that we just that string can wrap for all these tasks. Um, and I think they're in their own bit of the source tree, technically, but yeah, they're in the central source tree. Gotcha. And I was just really the, the stuff I'd like to move in is that with pipelines, we could also move the pipelines in. So if you're a third party, it's very easy to also um, do that. Our Jenkins with IS is uh, basically ephemeral minus, I guess, artifacting, but for the fact that all of our pipelines are in tree, meaning we blow out Jenkins on accident or on purpose. Um, all of the jobs just get pulled back in. Yeah. So yeah, the basic is. Uh, and this probably happened a little bit. Sorry. Oh no problem. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure if this is exactly what it means. Uh, so so for FreeBSD installation right now uh, has an optional component that is uh, test.txt. So uh, uh, load that. Has the files uh, uh, programs which will be installed under user tests. So you can just install a package called Curia. Oops. Yeah. And uh, which is the test driver? Then you just run Curia test. Uh, of course, for some. Uh, tests you need the root pre privilege. Uh, so basically, uh, you just run your test under that. You can run the, uh, uh, you can run all the tests uh, in that revision. So this is what we basically have. 
in our uh, uh, test and faster. So we uh, provision a new VN with this uh, <coughs> kernel from that revision, and uh, we just uh, <coughs> goes into that VN and uh, go through user tests and the run Kuya test. Yeah, and uh, uh, you can also Run individual tests for for one uh, component, something like that. I will say I did not find the man pages the friendliest, oh, cool. um, especially when it came to stuff like the you know remember, remember seeing the DFS stuff oh, and wait, you say um, QA, Q, the, yeah. QA, the man pages not being the not really useful. Um, there's a lot of useful stuff, but Huh. Uh, and it might just be the ZFS tests I, I specifically had a bad time with because they don't really talk about because those I don't know if other tests have a lot of configuration variables like the QA oh, tests yeah. and we mentioned four of them and we only ever mentioned how to put them in the config file and never even mentioned how to put them in the command line. Mm -hmm. Once um, uh, Alan Summers sent me, oh, this is how I run the tests. <coughs> it was, oh, this is really yeah. easy and. I guess with Jenkins, if Jenkins is if Jenkins output has the exact test commands running mm -hmm. and he pre up, that's pretty easy to figure out. I just wanted to throw that out in general. I see. Uh, for that, for that thing, yeah, because uh, uh, ZFS test is uh, uh, a spatial. Uh, that that means uh, some spatial environment data. So even. Uh, in CIW video or your ZFS testers are, are a separated job. And um, on that subject, we're going to have to work with you eventually to uh, reintegrate when, when the time for ZOP comes around, CFS on 3BSD, we're going to have to reintegrate yeah. the test pool into ZOP, which we've done a lot of work to get passing, all of them passing yeah, back into QA, and hopefully, hopefully we can. Uh, yeah, mesh them together fairly well. Yeah, I expect that. And uh, this is current uh, ZFS test speed. That kind of scares me, but we can talk about that after. Yeah. Uh, one thing is, uh, I think there is one change called uh, uh, ZFS expansion or ZFS D uh, just hang for an hour, but uh, I currently don't have uh, time to look into that. Right. But no, just one thing. I have two weird things there, I understand. Okay. I, so, to get my ARM Kruger built running, I had to loop Control T <laughs> to uh, the uh, ARM, to the QME stuff or the running stuff, so I've seen weird things. Okay. All right. So, uh, and uh, uh, is there any other? Uh, uh, suggestions or requirements from 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 you for, for developers and the vendors. So if I was going to like use your builds and, and go run my tests on them, I, I really would want that um, information on on what I should expect the <coughs> test results. To be. Um, What's the information about what? about the expected test results? Uh -huh. um, because I I really don't care about like expected failures. Know, as long as I'm as good as the rest of the tree, then I'm happy. Mm -hmm. So I, I, um, so I, I guess I, I would really like a solution to a flaky test problem, mm -hmm. so that I, I don't have to waste time looking for this. And Jenkins already does have a lot of history-based tools and things. So don't get me wrong; people can be a little bit slow and little bit ancient. but as I asked, uh, uh, is there a, a tool or to to answer a question like uh, this test test is failing uh, X times during the past Y builds? I, I mean, you, you can find click that. on the test job itself and click history and just look. Um, now to get an overall report and say, to be able to say more numeric, numerically, hey, I want to find all the X test jobs that are above a 5% value in the last 90 days. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you pull up uh, the test run, 
Yeah, that's, uh, I would say, yep, so what, what you mentioned is exactly uh, what well, I'm the doing. on the left side, if any of them. Right, but uh, the problem is then this, uh, one second. Uh, left side, or, or test go, sorry. Yep. Yeah, I know uh, <coughs> those are the ages of those. Yeah, so click on one of those. Yeah, but the, the thing is... And then hit history on the left side. But click on one of them first, so it loads. Now if you hit history on the left side of the screen, history. yeah, history right there, that should limit it down to the single test. And give it a while, because this box might need more oomph, or this might just be slow, I forget. This should return, the, I believe, the down to the test there. Um, so can we see the, 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 the this case, the history, oh, the history of this case? Yeah, it, pa 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 and the, the, it should, if it's loading, I can't even tell, tell at this point. But it was slow when I was doing it over here because I was poking around beforehand. Yeah. Um, yeah, but if you see, it's all the way down to this specific test. So we have uh, that way running the test, and whenever it's done generating, we should get a chart in the upper right. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Well, and uh, yeah. Uh, the, the vertical is, is time, okay. so we can also see, you know, that. So the, there's some tools here, um, but they're a little bit slow, and the, which might be just a, a box capability thing, or might not be, and. Um, like it would be nice if I download some image and, and I also have some file that's like here's here's a test that we ran. And and so, so what, all kind, this, what kind of image? Uh, uh, or, uh, just what, whatever you're providing. The the tar files is fine. Uh -huh. uh, but but like a just a text file that says here's here's the test we ran. You know, pass fail, pass pass, like e pass pass. Can you go to artifact control test that XML? Oh, you mean uh, uh, upload the uh, the uh, JUnit JUnit XML to the test server? Or just go back to test results. Uh, right there for this run. Uh, Joe, do you remember the way to grab the text of XML? Oh, the same as XML? Yeah, just to save the. Yeah. Where's that? It's on here. It's under test results analyzer file. Where's that? Yeah, it's normally just the artifact. All right, can you go to the artifact for the job then? Uh, oh, currently I don't uh, store artifacts directly oh, okay. with Jenkins, but uh, uh, I can just configure Jenkins to also upload the unit.xml to our artifact server. So it will uh, sit aside with those that, files. Well, that would be nice, but yeah. like this flakiness analysis, the fact that we include a few, so then mm -hmm. it, that would be a useful. Yeah. yeah, I guess uh, maybe uh, I will not uh, disable test cases, but I can maintain a, a list about breaking test cases. Yeah. So and I bet somebody has to have written a J in an analyzer for you know multiple test runs. It's a fair even we're using one of the most common you know test output styles. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anything else for Okay. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, uh David? <coughs> and then, uh, is it possible for you to share some, uh, uh, some things about the test requirements from Amazon. Yeah, like oh. what you mentioned the last year. Yeah, so so we have a change management system that functions obviously external uh, in the, the operating system that they're running on on uh, uh, any of the instances, right? So the behavior itself will be tracked as uh, baseline for any of the different operating systems. So you do that independently. So the change management system, the change management system. We will um, do an alert and a, a test system that responds to that. So there's 
the test system is called Tapper internally. And uh, Tapper will take the alert from the, from the uh, test system and then run a series of test panels against any of the instances that are, uh, or any of the operating systems that are identified in that, in, uh, as a problem <coughs> or, or identified as affected by an outside machine. Uh, so one thing I want to know is, uh, uh, among, uh, as I understand, uh, not tested is uh, mainly about testing the, the uh, hypervisor uh, about the week, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, is so what kind of test you pull up the, I mean, so uh, it's a combination of tests like just behavioral tests, functional tests. Uh -huh. So, uh, I mean, the thing you wanted is a, 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 a list or a check. I mean, you, you want to have a, an idea about what things we want to run inside the virtual machine to make sure the behavior uh, is not changed uh, by the underlying uh, underlying hypervisor change. Yeah, right? we, want, yeah, we, want a, we want a baseline of those changes as well, right? We want to be able to look through the history and identify that those changes are not. Okay, so uh, is currently the Kuya test uh, about the user space and the kernel space uh, enough for that, or do you need any uh, any further thing? So these are these are all great great for us in terms of uh, in terms of the starting point, jumping on point, and then being able to to build new ones uh, that are associated with things that are like just just uh, infrastructure specific, like like um, attaching and detaching network interfaces, and maybe those kinds of things. Things that don't necessarily fall in the purview of a standing metal system, right? Like we're going to uh, there's going to be things that are uh, that are odd as a result of the you know hot plug behavior, right? That isn't necessarily supported or um, changes in the way the the changes in the disk substructure or um, modifications to service. So uh, is there any uh, uh, developers uh, doing this on, on previous day in Amazon? So occasionally if there's something that, that has a, is identified as a specific customer pain point, the, those tests will get <coughs> immediately integrated in. Mm -hmm. um, but it's on case case by case basis. Okay. So yeah, it's not a specific change in there. Okay. So do you mean that uh, currently we don't have a test a regression test about those uh, hypervisor surface by previous? Well, we have we have a we have a series of tests that are that are pushed there, but they're not. Um, uh, but they're because I did it not because of the. Not because they're a requirement of the of the mm -hmm. uh, of the hypervisor team. Right? I guess one more question for you would be: What's the order of operations you're looking for here? So, does that really is it kind of affect the automation? Are you looking at um, you trigger your event, Amazon, then you separately trigger a certain set of related tests, or are you looking at you trigger your tests? In the middle of them, you trigger your event, and then you let the test finish. So you have a pre and post. Well, we make a we make if we, if we make a, a change, <coughs> once that change again is is in place and it goes into a, a, a test environment, then I kick off the tests. Okay. So so the, so, the tests are the test, tests are kicked off at a specific point in the change management. Yeah. Okay. So so both need. The test and then looking at the relations of these tests that apply to these situations, right. which is you know something very you know yeah that, that we do a lot of doing. I've been very happy to see uh, Jerry very good at your use of this kind of stuff. Yeah, but I'm, I'm also conscious of, of the fact that, that from the out from an external perspective, that's an easy way to monitor a very 
very high AWS uh, right, just making making big changes on this. But what I'm really interested in doing is, is having that a lot of those tests run in our infrastructure before changes are even close remotely close to public so that those so that as those changes are done we can get baseline information and that baseline information can be identified regardless of whether or not we know the one-to-one -one relationship between the, between the, the test so you're getting the twist of the of the test information in some format that's consumable like JD. Um, do we have a way with QA to define I don't, I guess, trustworthiness of tests, because maybe that's an important thing to look at um, more than anything else is instead of disabling the tests, going into the code base, um, and if, if we, you know, identified it as a flaky test, but one that needs resolved. We can put that in a notation in the test case. Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, so that downstream, you know, people can, can, can realize, oh, okay, I just want to not run these or Ignore these sets of results, um, and uh, we have a plugin to, to let you know that you should install in Jenkins. That will give you a lot better data. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I, I know, the, it, the thing is no, but uh, that's a very, I think that's a very useful uh, uh, improvement of the QDR because not only for a flaky test, uh, we are also talking about uh, how to run testers uh, in parallel. And, but uh, there are many uh, test cases requires uh, some uh, access to some mutual exclusive uh, okay. resource. So if we can uh, annotation those test case, annotate those case, test cases, uh, such as can be run in parallel or can only be run uh, uh, storably, yeah. that will be help over, over the, the test execution time. Scott, would that give you what you need, right? So we're talking about if we upload and if we update the tree and mark out the text that we think are flaky. But um, so so yeah, you can instead of have a list to have you to come. I mean, I think both. I think I don't think so. What? Like the the pass or fail of test is going to just vary based on what the tree. It doesn't seem. Reasonable to, to be pushing that into the test, right? That, that's like a property of, of the, the code and the tests together. Well, the, the code and the tests are in the same tree. I mean, if, if you feel like pushing, like and constantly pushing changes into the test, it's like, okay, it now, now it passes down. Well, but the thing is, I'm saying for flaky, not pass fail. I'm saying for like, we know this test needs fit. Once we've come to the determination, I'm just saying to crowdsource the kind of, so we, we can have a bunch of pages, but more likely what we're gonna come up with, at least from what I'm looking at in the short term, mm -hmm. is something that you can sit there and look at for a while and go down a list and figure out, okay, this one looks suspect or looks flaky, and just making that information be more easily accessible. Mm -hmm. To say, I want the tests that I know I care about, or I know that are gonna succeed, and there's an issue if they don't. <coughs> It's, yeah, it's, as long as I can somehow know what tests should should be passing along. How, how, do you, how would you make that determination otherwise? Uh, uh, you mean just if there was none of this? Yeah, if there's none of this. Yeah. Well, ideally, how would you? How would you um, probably just if the last few runs of tests or something like that could be an approximation for it. So you just have some sort of deviation? Sure. If, if it failed in the last 20, then uh, it failed now. Okay. Uh, so if, if the next one fails after that, then OK, well, that's not, not a need for us. So fail, 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 and then some confidence rating is kind of associated with the fact that it's failing. Exactly. <laughs> I don't want to, like, so stuff's coming and going in the tree and whatever state. I want to be looking at, at problems on my hardware, and I don't really want to go like triage a zillion other things. Right. So, 
so I'd, I'd like to kind of just be able to filter it for like, okay, well, this, it passes for everybody else, not for you. So figure it out. So one of, one of the big things there may be um, also uh, doing your test runs on the snapshot. On the um, snapshot of what? Uh, do, we, do, we, do we run test runs on the snapshots we test every so often, every two months or whatever? Do you mean our system run? Yeah, do we have? Oh, you mean? I'm, I'm just saying have, have every once a month once, two months, or either using software you have or using new stuff, have a, have a set of tests inside your site, or, or, pick an, or just pick a specific one, I don't care, mm -hmm. that is elevated to the one that everybody that cares externally is going to be looking at for the next three months. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I want to test that every commit, right? So okay, I mean, okay, that's what I'm asking. Okay, how long it happens. So mm -hmm. Test every commit, but not have to worry about what the developers broke or kind of two things that conflict. So, so I want to figure out like busted firmwares and like you know pieces that work for all hardware except the next generation. So I like that type of stuff. But you're talking about test every commit that's made associated with the firmware, right? In, no, uh, just in the tree, right? Okay. So, so that I, I'm like keeping up with the tree. So as, as something gets pushed as a problem for some new piece of hardware, then I'll know about it right then. Like, I don't want to find out about too much. And, and the only way I can see fixing that is, is, being, is if, you, if you provide the resources to check with the issue or why. Well, if I can mark it as a bug today and then know that that test is not going to affect anything else that I'm doing, it might be possible for me to go on with other, with, you know, with, with, with other types, other things there. But it's, I, I mean, I, I guess I, I see it from, it, it's hard for me to think about every commit, but, but um, because I think that's, that, I mean, that is awesome, a lot of work, but, um, but, but then I, I do think that that's, that's something that needs to be done, so, um, but it's, uh, but then fi figuring out a way to make that, to make it confident for, that's really what I would be looking for. Zero confidence is the thing I want to be able to set that and, and, and have that be integral in my in my sleep. And if I want to move on to you know if I want to change that based on success rates, I I would have to have other people's data. And so that's the thing that I keep coming back to is other people's data. Yeah, and and just a quick comment on the flaky test. I know at least one of my test suites, I have a known failure in my tests. Um, it's Quarto, and we don't have the best bit of traction here, but specifically because it's a flaky failure, and I want to know, like, does it all of a sudden stop being a flaky failure? I mean, I think Do we have a good miraculous result, and I can really buy that quick fix, but, you know. Yeah, I think um, for here we have two cases. Uh, one is uh, if we, I mean, such as Intel or uh, IX, are building software uh, with FreeBSD. Uh, in that case, I think we need to run uh, a test case, uh, a test case along with the latest uh, revision, and uh, at the best, uh, run test uh, against uh, every revision. But uh, I think for the uh, hardware lab, uh, it's probably not necessary to run the latest tests from FreeBSD head. So uh, I think for hardware test lab, we can uh, grab the source code and uh, the test, including the test from the, uh, the, the follow the symbolic link of latest tested. So. Uh, for that, uh, for that uh, uh, image, uh, you, you you know that those tests are uh, working fine on the current production hardware. Then you can run those uh, tests in an experimental hardware and uh, compare the results. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the idea. So mm -hmm. you, 
How often, I, maybe you said it, I missed it. How often do you run the test, the test suite? Uh, uh, almost uh, every commit. Okay, yeah, so that information is available with every commit then? Right. So, uh, what's the question? Yeah, so for the <coughs> server, okay. So for the active <laughs> server, uh, Or head uh, latest uh, uh, is whatever we have uh, built, and uh, we have tested and uh, tested V and tested V. Uh, so these three combined links uh, uh, is associated with the three phases. So uh, build, so build, uh, uh, tested V and, and uh, tested, and uh, so you can just. Uh, So you can take the revision here uh, to know the revision number, or uh, and uh, just grab those things. And uh, uh, this semantic will be updated uh, uh, once the This test job is done. Yeah. So uh, uh, after this job is done and the older results are passed. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we still have five minutes. Any other comments, suggestions, or even complaints? Thank you very much for organ for all this stuff and also organizing this. Yeah, thank you you for tolerance for my slow progress. <laughs> it's hard and it's a lot. Okay. okay, so thanks for everybody attending.